In only six fights for the UFC, Ilya Topuria managed to set himself as the next title challenger. Since arriving on the scene, he climbed up the division by putting on bad beatings, causing altercations, downplaying his opponents, and claiming he is the future champion. Because of high display of confidence and unapologetic behavior, he created a lot of bitter rivalries. His beef with fighters such as Paddy Pimblett and even future opponent Alexander Volkanovsky made fans take notice. But does he have what it takes to become one of the biggest names in the sport? Or is he perhaps too young? And how will he be able to deal with the challenge ahead of him in Volkanovsky? To answer these, let's first go back and look at what brought him up to this point in his career. Topuria signed with the UFC back in 2020 at only 23 years old. Entering with an undefeated record of 8-0 after competing for Brave FC and a couple of other smaller promotions. Known for being a well-rounded fighter with exceptional boxing skills, he made his UFC debut in the featherweight division on October 10th, 2020 at UFC Fight Night against Youssef Zalal. The fight went the distance and Ilya won by unanimous decision, securing his first victory within the organization. He continued his success by defeating Damon Jackson and Ryan Hall, both by knockout in the first round. Damon was outstruck on the feet, while Ryan repeatedly attempted the Imanari roll without being defensively responsible. At that time, only the hardcore fans were familiar with Topuria. That was until Paddy Pimblett started throwing shade at him and insulted his country of origin in a controversial tweet. I didn't believe when I saw, when I saw that tweet. I was living in, in, in Georgia when, when that war happened, you know? And it was a very difficult time for me, for my family, for uh, for all my friends, for my country. And see, see how someone is joking about that, it makes my blood boil. And although Paddy later apologized for his comments, Topuria still decided to confront him at UFC London in 2022, where they were both scheduled to fight on the main card. This led to a clash at a hotel lobby during fight week. Topuria came with the intention to start a brawl, pressing Paddy into a corner. And in response, Paddy threw a hand sanitizer at him. Some fans viewed the conflict as an attempt by Topuria to build his name off a more popular fighter, and they speculated whether the altercations were merely an attempt to build hype for a potential future bout. Even though Topuria kept calling him out later on, the fight didn't make much sense at the time, given that they were in different weight classes and had different paths ahead of them. Fast forward to the UFC London fight night, and Ilya was set to face Jai Herbert in front of the English crowd. As the fight began, Topuria was figuring out the distance and looking for openings to set up his punches. However, only 40 seconds into the bout, he took an unexpected head kick that rocked him badly. Fortunately, he managed to immediately take Jai down and buy himself time to recover. After almost getting finished in the first, Topuria made the required adjustments in the second round, finding a way to navigate Jai's much longer reach to get into the pocket with him. A minute in, and he found what he was looking for. He first landed a shot to the body, and then followed with a right hook that lifted Jai off the ground, leaving him out cold. Paddy Pimblet, we're not lose. I wanna fight you next and kick like I did the last time. You. Okay. After stirring up controversy with Paddy and displaying incredible skills, coupled with durability and heart, people began jumping on his hype train and eagerly looking forward to the next step in his career. Just before the end of 2022, UFC matched him up with Bryce Mitchell at UFC 282 on the last card of the year. Both were undefeated at the time and considered significant prospects in their division. Topuria didn't have any personal issues with him, but Bryce took some of the comments he made earlier to heart and called him out at the press conference. Ilya said, I'm a coward. Does a coward show up prepared to die? No. I'm no coward. I've already proved him wrong, and I'll prove him wrong again on Saturday. But Topuria wasn't giving him much attention. Instead, he decided to go back and forth with Paddy, who was scheduled to fight on the same card once again. Did the UFC have kept us apart. When you see me coming, because you know when I, saw, when I saw him last time, he got an unsanitizer bottle bounced off his foot. I don't. Knit. I don't understand you or anything. Back at the flouty mouth, flouty. Their controversy continued in the build-up to this event. Even though they weren't fighting each other, Paddy was scheduled to face Jared Gordon, who seemed to be a good matchup for him and was set as a stepping stone in building his brand. On fight night, Topuria entered the cage as a minus 150 favorite. Throughout the fight, 
Bryce didn't have any answers to anything Topuria was throwing at him. He ended up controlled on the ground, where he was supposed to have an advantage, and convincingly outstruck on the feet. Two minutes into the second round, Topuria rocked him with an overhand that dropped Bryce to the canvas. He then followed and managed to pancake him and controlled him until slipping in an arm triangle choke to close up the fight. What was supposed to be his first real test, and a breakthrough into the top 10, felt like just another day in the gym for Topuria. He handled Bryce with ease and put the top 10 featherweights on notice. Surprisingly, Paddy Pimblett, who had a much easier opponent that night, struggled to put on a performance worthy of a victory. The fight ended up being scored in his favor, but most of the people saw it as a robbery. It seemed quite obvious that Jared took two rounds of Paddy and should have been announced a winner. But what Paddy did next made a lot of the fans turn on him. He acted like he put on a dominant performance that night, when in fact he lost to an unranked guy. His further comments would enrage fans as he showcased absolute delusion and refused to give any credit to Jared. There is a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Unfortunately, Paddy has come across terribly in the last week. Paddy went from most loved to most hated within a week. This caused a lot of fans to turn on him, and for someone like Ilya Tapuria who put on a clinical performance that night and was beefing with him in the fight buildup, turned a lot of Paddy's newly profound haters into fans of his. That night, any possibility of the two fighting each other anytime soon faded away. Do you have interest in booking them down the line, that matchup, Paddy and Ilya? You know, he, he, after tonight, he breaks into the top 10, you know, I'm sure that kid's looking at title. He wants the title, you know, so he's working his way this way. The victory over Bryce placed him into the top 10 and earned him a completely new fan base. He used all this to start calling out the top five featherweights, as well as the champ himself, Alexander Volkanovsky. At only 25 years of age, and as a fairly inexperienced fighter in the UFC, very few people gave him any chance against the then pound-for-pound -pound king and a dominant champion. As 2023 rolled around, Volkanovsky was scheduled to face Islam Makachev for the lightweight title at UFC 284 in Perth, Australia. Considering this would put the featherweight division on hold, the UFC added an interim bout between Yair Rodriguez and Josh Emmett on the same card. Both of these bouts didn't include Topuria, and it became obvious that he would need at least one more victory before fighting for the title, as the winner of Yair and Emmett would face Volkanovski next. UFC 284 saw Yair Rodriguez and Islam Makachev come out as winners in their bouts. Considering this would send Volkanovski back to the 145 division, the fight between him and Yair was set, and it was also now clear who was next for Topuria, namely the loser of that interim bout, Josh Emmett. Josh made a quick turnaround only four months after losing to face the tough up-and-coming prospect. It created a perfect scenario for Topuria, fighting a top five guy who just fought for the title. The victory against him would ensure he breaks into the top five and gets him one step closer to a title fight. Where do you find success on Saturday? I just have to be worried about his hooks, nothing else. I couldn't care less about his wrestling or beating or ground game even his boxing. So he had to be worried about my boxing, my wrestling, my, my, my grappling, about everything, so. Everyone's always the next champion, the next contender, the next big thing. This is gonna be a tough, tough test for him. Ilya was quite respectful when answering his questions from the media. However, he didn't shy away from showing his confidence. You're obviously not lacking confidence. How do you see yourself stacking up against Alex if you are to get that fight? Same as always, I'm, I'm gonna finish him in the first round. Josh was stylistically a perfect matchup for him, and this was evident on fight night. He entered the bout as a huge favorite at minus 350. The fight started off competitively, but as time passed, it became more one-sided. Round after round, Topuria was putting a bad beating on Emmett. It got so bad that the doctor had to step in the octagon in between almost every round to check on him. But being the warrior that he is, giving up was not an option. Going into the fifth round, Topuria was well ahead on the judges' scorecards, so he decided to take the fight to the ground and secure the victory. He won by unanimous decision with one judge scoring a fourth round 10-7 in his favor, something we almost never see in mixed martial arts. This fight marked one of the most dominant victories in featherweight history, 
And that division is known for some of the most brutal beatdowns. But what impressed people the most was the calmness and maturity in his approach, and fighting at a level that's far beyond his age. This performance set the stage to call out the champion, and he made sure to take full advantage of it. I'm the next guy, without any doubt. I come what deserves to me, which is to be the number one to take that US belt. And I want Alex to defend that belt and show to him and the whole world where his world's gonna end and mine's gonna start, so. One of the best skills I have is the patience. If they offer me to fight with Max Holloway in Spain, let's do it. If not, um, I'm gonna wait for my, for my title shot. That's all. Disrespectful callouts and overconfidence from Topuria started to agitate the champion, so he decided to respond accordingly. And I'm talking to Ilya, if he's watching, please don't fight Max. Just don't fight Max. Let me, be, let me be the guy to beat you up. What do you make of the confidence? First round, he said. First round knockout. You've got to be confident. Like, you know, there's, there's confidence and then there's the deluge, delusional. Although the two were already going back and forth, Volk had a fight planned ahead of him against the interim champion, Yair Rodriguez. Considering UFC didn't have any plans to visit Spain anytime soon, Ilya decided to sit on the sidelines and wait for his turn at the title. Volkanovski and Yair were scheduled for UFC 290 in July of 2023. While Yair has lost to some of the top contenders in the past, not all chances were off the table for him to win in this fight. Known for his diverse striking and lightning fast kicks, people weren't writing him off. In fact, some believed he could be the one to finally defeat Volkanovski in the featherweight division. But they couldn't have been more wrong. Volk put on an absolute clinic that night, cancelling any striking attempts from Yair and taking him to the ground at will. Once again, he seemed unbeatable. People argued it was his best performance in a title fight, except for one guy who wasn't impressed whatsoever. I didn't was impressed by his performance, like the, the poorest fight I, I ever seen in my life. You got a new face in Ilya. Um, you know, people will say it's a new challenge. I don't think it's a, a challenge. The two faced off after the fight, making it clear at that moment what was next for both of them. It wasn't until November 6th that Dana White came out and officially confirmed the fight. The bout was now set for February 12th, where both fighters would finally step into the octagon and lay on the line all the words they had exchanged. However, an unexpected event occurred just 10 days before UFC 294 on a card that was supposed to showcase a rematch between Islam Makachev and Charles Oliveira. Oliveira suffered a severe cut during his fight camp and had to withdraw days before the scheduled bout. Another matchup that Volk had in mind instead of Topuria was to go up and challenge Islam for a title one more time because it was so close the last time the two entered the octagon. However, it turned out to be a very bad decision on his part to accept this challenge. He came in a seemingly poor shape from what we are usually used to seeing, and he also had to fly all the way from Australia to Abu Dhabi. All cards were stacked against him that night, but he was up for a challenge. However, it turned out to be true. The night couldn't have gone worse for the featherweight champion. Islam caught him with a vicious head kick in the first round, and then followed with ground and pound punches to finish the fight. The ending was brutal. This raised some concerns about the upcoming fight he was scheduled for against Topuria. But shortly after the event, he came out and affirmed he is still in that fight, despite what happened not so long ago. This was a sign of relief for fans, and Topuria, who wanted to challenge him for that title more than anyone. Some people argue this might be too quick of a turnaround because of the brutal way he got finished, especially when going in against someone like Topuria, who is a very precise striker and hits very hard. Another poor decision to rush into the fight could potentially be a career ending for Falk. However, the fight has been signed and both fighters are ready to face each other in a soon coming bout. The public opinion on who'll come out as a winner is divided. Some people argue that UFC may have rushed him too early as he is only 26 years of age and Volkanovski on the other hand is almost 10 years older so the experience gap might play a huge role in this fight. However, the other side thinks that Volk might be on the way out, especially considering the stats that have been haunting champions over 35 in the divisions under 185 pounds. The record of UFC fighters aged 35 plus in title fights below middleweight currently stands at two wins and 30 defeats. 
So don't be shocked if Volkanovsky was to fall off a cliff at any time, as he turns 35 in September. And even though Topuria is still young and has time to come back in case he suffers a loss, there's still a lot on the line for him. The UFC sees a potential superstar in him. A flashy style, outspoken on a mic, exciting fighting style, brings a country to his fights, and all that at only 26 years of age. The stars are aligned for Topuria, and now it's up to him to turn his dreams into reality. In a scenario where he pulls off a victory, his potential future opponent will be fighting on the following card. Sean O'Malley has been very vocal recently about going up and facing Tapuria for a belt if he was to beat Cheeto Vera at UFC 299. So check out my deep dive on Sean O'Malley's journey to the title and how he accomplished everything he set out to achieve.